It is a small and powerful scientific breakthrough. Earlier this week, we told you how Canadian researchers had zeroed in on a specific bacteria they now know is to blame for mass sea star deaths off North America's west coast. That bacteria is from the same family that causes cholera in humans. For more, we're joined by Ashley Kidd, Conservation Program Manager with Sunflower Star Lab in California and a fellow Canadian. Ashley, thank you for joining us. Your lab has been researching sunflower or or sea star die-offs for, for quite some time. What was that feeling when you heard that the researchers had uncovered the cause? Uh, our lab's laboratory specifically works with the aquaculture side of things, and it was so important uh, to have a, a, an enemy with a face, finally. We've been working with the quarantine protocols that were that we worked with these uh, disease ecologists to have the best practices. But now that we can actually test for this bacteria is really important so we can work better amongst institutions and really um, build out uh, a restoration plan in areas that are looking to do that. And remind us, how long did it take to, to figure out the, the cause of this die off? How many years? Well, the initial event was observed in 2013. So it has been over a decade of, of tremendous work that the um, Canadian researchers at UBC and the Hakai Institute and the University of Washington have, have done. And we're just um, very honored to be part of such a collaborative conservation team. Uh, conservation work, especially across an entire continental coastline does not happen in a vacuum and to be looped in with these researchers and to uh, have been a part of this work to really be able to apply all of this research immediately is is tremendous. You talk about a continental coastline that is thousands of, of kilometers of, of space. Now that you know the cause, what can you do practically to try and, and stop it now? Well, stopping it might not be what we're trying to do, but mm -hmm. limiting the exposure to all of the animals that are held under human care or outside of the ocean, um, as well as understanding sort of what the prevalence of this bacteria is in the ocean. What, how does it present in different sea star species, not just the sunflower sea star in areas uh, along the coast? And how is that affecting where we're seeing sea, sunflower sea stars come back? Mm -hmm. uh, along the coast. So, uh, how much more, can you give us a sense of how much more could be done and, and is able to be done to help sea stars uh, recover beyond just slowing the spread of, of, of what this bacteria does? Well, now we can, we can start understanding just how does this, this pathogen or this bacteria um, present itself? How does it at what levels does it become symptomatic and cause this wasting event uh, versus just existing in the population without causing an outbreak? Um, for being able to keep these uh, the, re the remaining sunflower seizures that we have for research and uh, potential restoration efforts, it's really important to be able to test it within our facilities to make sure that we're not um, introducing uh, stars that we're bringing in that have maybe important uh, or unique genetics uh, and put them in danger by having them in a system that has this bacteria or putting them in a um, in an environment where they could be exposed to it. So having a test or being able to identify this bacteria is, is really important just to be able to manage uh, their their population effectively. Ashley Kidd, we very much appreciate your time and expertise. Thank you for joining us. Best of luck. Thank you so much.